Welcome to this section, Avoid Repetitive Code Using Higher Order Components. In this video, we will introduce higher order components. The objectives of this video are to introduce higher order components, and we will compare and contrast the following, class components and functional components, stateful and stateless components. A class component uses the ES6 class syntax to create a component that extends the component API from React. It is a requirement to extend from component to utilize this render method from React. It does require more code, but it does come with benefits such as state and lifecycle events. In this example, we see the keyword class and the name of our component, which in this case is class component which extends from component. Then we have a constructor that is called before the component is mounted. This will establish the props in the component. Within the constructor is also where we can initialize state, which in this case sets loading to true. Under the constructor is where we utilize a component did mount lifecycle. This method will manipulate state and set loading to false. Within the render function, we return a view with some logic that will display text whether our state is loading or not. A functional component is a function that returns a React element. The syntax is fairly simple. You define a function and you will need to pass the props into it as an argument. This is what could display in your component. The return value of this function is a React element. This sample code on the right would return a view component that has nested text. That would display whatever is stored in the property value on the props value passed in. The biggest difference between class and functional components is obviously the syntax. Within a class component, you have the option to utilize a constructor and lifecycle methods, such as component did mount or component should mount. Most functional components will not have state when reading through legacy code because state could not be utilized in functional components until React 16.8 with the introduction of hooks, which we will discuss later on in this course. So let's discuss why functional components at all. Functional components are easy to test because they are just simple JavaScript functions, which means it's simple to predict the output based on your input passed in. They are usually less code, and classically, they are utilized to handle presentation only, so it's easy to use for presentational components as well. The React team states that there is a chance of slight performance enhancements in the future when using functional components. Now let's move on to why class components. Since hooks are relatively new at this point, a lot of best practices have not been established for handling events and state in functional components. The advantage for using these in class is it's been practiced since the introduction of React. Since a lot of legacy code will be primarily built using classes, it's significant to understand how to read and modify a class component as well. Stateful components are components that contain state-based logic. So in short, these components will establish state and have methods to manipulate them. In terms of reviewing code, the majority of these components will be a class-based component. In our current example on our home screen JS, this is a stateful component. On line 10, within our constructor, we establish state. Then on line 17, there is a method to manipulate state that is called by the inputs. A stateless component, on the other hand, will usually return part of a UI based on the props passed in. These will usually be a functional component since methods for modifying state will not be needed. In the fancy input component, we can see that this is a stateless component. It's a functional component that passes in props and returns part of the UI that is driven by the props passed in. In terms of differences, the largest is that each component has a concern of how to handle state or not handle it at all. Now that we have established a foundation of different component types, it's time to see how this all relates to higher order components. 
Let's start by defining what a higher order component is. A higher order component can be defined as a function that accepts another component as an argument that will return a new component. So in the example below, we have a function called with HOC, which accepts a component as an argument and returns another function that passes in props. Then the nested function will return a new component with those props applied. When utilizing this pattern, you are able to enhance code sharing and can simply inject data into your presentational components so that they can remain stateless and can be functional or class components.